Welcome back. On this show, we are delving into the possibility of past lives. Have we all been here before? Earlier on, we saw top TV presenter Sarah Green take part in a regression session where she described the life of Sylvia, a slave girl in 18th century America. I was taken. It's very sad. God. They had guns. Sarah certainly seemed convinced that her regression felt real, so we sent our archives expert and master historian across the Atlantic. Could he uncover any truth in Sarah's story? What an extraordinary tale of Sylvia, a young slave girl in 18th century America, and we thought the clues were so good that I've come 5,000 miles across the ocean just to check them out. But where do we start? Well, we learned that Sylvia was learning French, and she also gives us that crucial town name of Orléans, which, for my money, is here, New Orleans. And I'm going to tell you just how I think those clues prove me right. Why did you have to leave the island? It was taken. It's so sad. God. This dramatic clue led me to only one conclusion. Sylvia had been captured and thrown into the Atlantic slave trade. In the early 18th century, powerful countries like England and France were expanding their empires and colonizing the Americas. These new colonies needed hard labor, and in the 1700s, laborers meant slaves. Ships from Europe would travel down to Africa, where they'd gather their slaves, and then make the arduous journey across the Atlantic to the Caribbean and the colony ports on the east coast of America. So, most slaves came from Africa. But did Sylvia? It was an island. Where was the island? Big sea. And what, what was the weather like there? It could be very stormy. Now, I think she's talking about the Caribbean, because like this place, it's prone to the sort of tropical storms that she describes. And interestingly, after her aggression, Sarah told us that she thought Sylvia definitely wasn't an African. So how about this? Maybe she was a Caribbean native, a Caribbean Indian, picked up on a slave ship en route from Africa to the slave ports of North America. It's certainly not impossible. And she also gives us some fantastic clues about the language. So maybe those hold the answer. What was the word for hello? It sounded like kama, kamach, kamachina. What would you say to say my name is? Mino, Mino, Mino. Now, I've taken this recording to some language experts. What they said was that it didn't really fit any surviving African or indeed Caribbean languages either. But I do know that some languages were lost when many of the native tribes in the Caribbean were enslaved. So it's a tempting thought to wonder that maybe Sarah has got in touch with some long lost language. But the key thing is, where does she go next? Where does New Orleans fit in? What's the name of the town or the village? Oléo. This is the New Orleans of today. A modern bustling city and a fantastic mix of the old and the new. But was it here in the 18th century? Well, yes it was. And what's more, it was founded in 1718. And that's just one year before Sarah says Sylvia came here. And what's more, I've discovered that the first slave boats from Africa and the Caribbean arrived here to this very port in 1719, the exact year Sarah gives us. And once in New Orleans, Sylvia is quickly bought by a French family. How were you selected to come and live with this family? They wanted to save me. What would have happened to you if they hadn't saved you? If you're working in the street. This is Congo Square. And now, as you can see, it's a beautiful park. But over 200 years ago, this was the centre of the slave auction in New Orleans. Now, there's no doubt that Sylvia's prospects getting off the boat would not have been good because most female slaves either found themselves sold into service or worse, into prostitution. And here, back then, like any frontier town, prostitutes were in high demand. So, really, she did have a lucky break, but she also got her name. And have they given you a new name? Sylvia. 
And what's their surname? Do you know their family name? Bergamo. So they've named you Sylvia Bergamo. Another clue checks out. Slaves would have been renamed by their owners and have been labelled with their owner's surname. But what do we know about Sylvia's new life? I mean, my house now, a beautiful house. Now, not many buildings survive here from the 18th century because back in 1794, the entire city was devastated by a huge fire. But this is a rare survivor. It's called Madame John's Legacy, and it's an old Creole house here in the French Quarter. It's not impossible, perhaps, that Sylvia's house looked a little bit like that one. But even if I can't find the building exactly, we have got the right time, the right town, and we've got a very plausible reason, the slave trade. And another area of Sarah's story also checks out in what she tells us about her husband, Richard. Richard is a doctor. He's dark like me, but not so dark. Oh, everyone comes to him. And are they white people or black people or both? both? It's the best. This is pretty extraordinary because as a black or an Indian guy, Richard would almost certainly have been a former slave and that begs a couple of really important questions. One, how could a former slave have become a doctor? And two, how could he have treated pretty much anyone he wanted to? In the 1720s, New Orleans was an unusual place. It was a frontier town, a colony struggling to establish itself. Race wasn't an issue, but survival was. Whites, blacks and Indians had to work together to make the colony a success. It seems there wasn't the kind of racial prejudice that gripped Louisiana later in its history. This has been a fantastic tale and I suspect that there is a little more than a grain of truth in it. And there's no doubt that for me, pacing the streets here in New Orleans, I've got a real sense of the energy and spirit that created not just this city, but also America all those years ago. But was Sylvia Bergamot really a part of it? Well, of course, I can't tell you for sure, but for my money, I'd like to think she might have been. But what do you think? <laughs>